this is Windows 11 Build 26.05.2, the latest insider build for both dev and canary channels. We're gonna take a look at what's cooking up for dev users and what's new for canary users. Starting with several features that are new to dev users that I've experienced so far. The easiest change to spot is the scrollable quick settings. Unlike current Windows 11, when you want to add new function and features to it, it just stacks up until the top and spawns a scroll bar, hypothetically. But in this, we got sort of a page system and it is scrollable. Also, it is reorganizable, so if you want to move some actions to the top, now you can. Well, that's a small quality of life change. Another feature that got implemented in Canary is 7Z and task support for file and photo compression. Finally, after years of only supporting zip with no advanced option to choose from, now you can compress files and folders into 7-zip. Various star variants and zip. You can choose what compression method and what level of compression do you want to use. A small change can be seen in the time slash date flyout as you hover over it. Now, time of day is displayed in the flyout too, rather than just the date. Task Manager also gets a design update with its new icon, but I think that it looks more like an ocean wave rather than a statistic. WordPad is unfortunately deprecated and removed if you upgrade from an older build. What a shame, why can't they just enhance it like what they did with Notepad? Oh yeah, to increase the sale of Microsoft Office, I forgot. And a small change comes to the microphone test, which is now able to test the mic based on a processing, either by default or the communication. This helps someone who wants to test an accurate voice quality of a microphone from hands-free, e-phone or headset. Now, Let's take a look at what's also new for Canary users. Window previews on the taskbar are getting some under the hood changes with the animation as well as the look. As you can see, the animation is somewhat aligned to what Windows 11 animations are supposed to be, but in my opinion though, the animation still needs more work as it still doesn't feel right. File Explorer that has several tabs open in a window will now display it as current tab and X more tabs as the title text as you can see right here. Comparing to Windows 11 23H2, it just displays the current tab as the title text. Next up, you know how Microsoft is slowly migrating control panel app list to the settings app and some of them are still kept unchanged and unredirected due to compatibility reasons? Well now, color management comes to the list of applet that has been migrated and ported to settings. The layout is adapted to Windows 11's layout, whilst minimizing the settings of it. Perhaps we can see more function adapted in here in future builds. In the graphics sections of the settings app, there's a new setting named Display Connection. Although it is non-functional and it causes the settings app to crash when you click on it. Now that's what I- <laughs> For printing, we got a new- oh, new What? 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 Two printers and scanners? What the heck? <laughs> Which one should I choose? Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> so, there's something new called Windows Protection Printing Mode, where it will ensure security within the printing software. Now, clicking it does nothing as I don't have any physical printers. What the heck is wrong with me? The next one is Speak For Me on the accessibility. As you can see in the description, it can create a voice avatar and use it when in communications, whether offline or online. This screams an already existing feature on iOS called Personal Voice. I don't know if this Speak For Me feature is the same carbon copy feature as Personal Voice, but we'll see how it works in the future. A small change on the energy saver icon can be seen at the right bottom corner of the screen. It will look different depending on whether you are on the desktop or laptop. In the registry editor, you can find keys, values, and data by searching it in subtree. Now, the moment you've been waiting for in this build, sudo command is coming to Windows, although it, it's not the same sudo as what Linux typically has. Microsoft just took the philosophy of sudo command and recoded it from scratch, 
using Rust as the programming language. You can enable it via for developers on the system section and enable sudo. Now you got the option for sudo to run application in your window, with input disabled, or inline. Now let's try this. Oh, <coughs> it works! Now, this sudo function is still in early stage as it shows the version as 0.1.5. Now, for copilot features, which I don't have at the moment, but I'll show it anyway. Copilot icon that's present at the right bottom corner of the screen will either have a badge or using some nice animation when certain action is triggered such as copying an image or copying a text. And last of all, you can scan the Wi-Fi QR code using the camera up on Windows. How convenient is that? Of course, this is not everything that I showcase, but I tried to showcase everything that I know. For more information, you can check out the official announcement. The link will be in the description. And for now, let's enjoy this quote-unquote Windows Vista. Meanwhile, thank you to my supporters for making this video possible. And also don't forget to check out this video.